until the end. And this is the announced end of the internet by our Lord and Savior, President Barack Hussein Obama. I love you so much. Bow down to Obama. All right, let's finish up this uh this monster's, you know, very well spoken speech. He only stuttered and stammered once. I'm sure it didn't make the highlights. You know, you only got to see it live once. And our 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 Lord, our Savior, he says, Don't worry, we're not gonna spy on you. We love you. We've only expanded what the Bush administration has done. Hit the clip. This damage that can be caused by even a single cyber attack, ad hoc responses will not do. Uh, nor is it sufficient to simply strengthen our defenses after incidents or attacks occur. Just as we do for natural disasters, we have to have plans and resources in place beforehand, sharing information, issuing warnings, and ensuring a coordinated response. Third, we will strengthen the public-private partnerships that are critical to this endeavor. The vast majority of our critical information infrastructure in the United States is owned and operated by the private sector. So let me be very clear. My administration will not dictate security standards for private companies. On the contrary, we will collaborate with industry to find te technology solutions that ensure our security and promote prosperity. Fourth, we will continue to invest in the cutting edge research and development necessary for the innovation and discovery we need to meet the digital challenges of our time. And that's why my administration is making major investments in our information infrastructure laying broadband lines to every corner of America, building a smart electric grid to deliver energy more efficiently, pursuing a next generation of air traffic control systems, and moving to electronic health records with privacy protections to reduce costs and save lives. And finally, we will begin a national campaign to promote cybersecurity awareness and digital literacy from our boardrooms to our classrooms and to build a digital workforce for the 21st century. And that's why we're making a new commitment to education in math and science and historic investments in science and research and development. Because it's not enough for our children and students to master today's technologies, social networking and emailing and texting and blogging. We need them to pioneer the technologies that will allow us to work effectively through these new media and allow us to prosper in the future. And of course, we need so to these are the things we will do. You know, we need to indoctrinate your children further and further, and we have to have an excuse. You know, that's what the Cyberbullying Act is an excuse for. We need to protect the children, the children, no child left behind. I know I'm stealing a bit from George Carlin, and life is worth losing. And really, in my eyes, his, his best and greatest achievement in stand-up comedy among just a career of greatness. All right, let's, uh, let's finish it up with Barack Obama. Uh, let me also be clear about what we will not do. Our pursuit of cybersecurity will not include, I repeat, will not include monitoring private sector networks or internet traffic. We will preserve and protect the personal privacy and civil liberties that we cherish as Americans. Indeed, I remain firmly committed to net neutrality so we can keep the internet as it should be, open and free. The task I have described will not be easy. Some 1.5 billion people around the world are already online, and more are logging on every day. Groups and governments are sharpening their cyber capabilities. Protecting our prosperity and security in this globalized world is going to be a long, difficult struggle, demanding patience and persistence over many years. But we need to remember, we're only at the beginning. The epics of history are long. The agricultural revolution, the industrial revolution, by comparison, our information age is still in its infancy. We're only at Web 2.0. Now our virtual world is going viral. And we've only just begun to explore the next generation of technologies that will transform our lives in ways we can't even begin to imagine. So a new world awaits, a world of greater security and greater potential prosperity. All right, let's if stop right there. World, a, a world, a new world awaits. A world of greater security. Remember, not freedom, not individual liberty, security and prosperity. Oh, it's going to be prosperous for us to take over. It's going to be prosperous for to regulate the Internet. It's going to be prosperous for us to censor information. It's going to be prosperous for you to go to the mobile medical vans. All right, let's go to our next caller. Uh, Poke in Illinois, you're on the air. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, Adam in Nevada. Adam, you're on the line. Mr. Burmis. Yes, sir. Good to hear from you once again. I've been tuning in, listening to you. I can't. You got the stamina of. I don't even know what to describe you as now. <laughs> Filling in for Jones, doing your show. Good God, man. Yeah, no, it's tough. And I did a, an hour long radio show uh, yesterday also. So I did eight yesterday. I did seven yeah. today almost. And I'm doing. Believe uh, me, I, I've been listening the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which takes more stamina, you doing it or me listening to it without putting my fist to a wall. Oh, it's crazy, man. I mean, it just gets worse and worse. And, you know, I mean, I can't even. I didn't really know what I was going to talk to talk about other than, you know, the day's news stories wrapping up about RFIDs and all this other stuff during the week. I came in exhausted this morning, and I'm getting coffee, and then I'm watching this speech that we're playing live, and I'm just like, well, I know what I'm talking about for the next four hours. This is insanity. Yeah, but, you know, I'm just sitting back. I cracked open a bag of those new edible RFID chips. Delicious. <laughs> I got the barbecue. <laughs> but, uh, anyways... <laughs> I'm calling in uh, mostly to comment on something back when you were doing Jones earlier. You mm -hmm. had a caller coming in from Japan talking about the um, smart cards. Yeah, yeah. I almost wanted to do this anonymously, but you know what? It's long past time for that. It's, mm -hmm. I don't care if they know. They probably know my voice. Um, mm -hmm. I was supposed to work for the NSA at one point, but I failed five polygraph tests in a row. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm definitely on the list long before the new updated lexicon. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyways, um, when I got into the Navy, um, it was just when they first started unveiling the smart card, the new chipped IDs. Yeah, the ones with the RFID and all your biometric information that you give to the military. They got the RFIDs. They didn't mm -hmm. then. It was just the chip with all your data. Mm -hmm. And we never used them for anything. And I just saw them slowly getting more and more. When I got stationed in Korea, they started thumb scanning people. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, just a fun little bit of trivia out there because, again, I got in just when this was started and I knew people who were actually working on the project. Mm -hmm. Fun bit of trivia. The smart cards, as they're called, were originally called mark cards. Oh, really? Yes. And the server upon which everything was stored... Yes, the Beast, right? Was the Beast, yeah. Yeah, no, I remember that. That that was the name of the supercomputer that they were using for this database. Anthony and Hilder, Anthony Hilder, Jordan Maxwell, and others used to discuss that uh, back in, I think, uh, late 80s, early 90s. Just incredible information. Thank you so much, Adam. Let's go to Justin in Texas. Justin, you're online. Yes, Justin. Hey, Jason. Um, I don't want to drift too much... Uh you know, from your current subject, because it's, it's really important, but you, know, you just mis mentioned Jordan Maxwell and talked oh, just a few minutes ago mm -hmm. about bringing along his guests, and maybe I, I missed um, kind of what that was talking about, but I just, uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever, like, looked into Jordan Maxwell in, in detail? Well, you know, again, I, I say I, I enjoy his work on symbology. I don't necessarily abide by everything he has to say. Someone else called in about Michael Sarion and the lectures that he gives and having him on as a guest. And, you know, again, I don't think that everybody has full spectrum analysis, but I think that Jordan Maxwell has done some exceptional work. I mean, anybody that can get Image Comics to come in and start doing a series called New World Order based on a lot of his research, yeah, does it get hokey? Yeah, does it have the reptilians in it? It sure does. But at the same time, he's kind of like a, a underground pop culture icon in this movement. And I think that everything, you know, should be looked at. We, you know, everything out there is possible, but what's probable? You have to feed, you know, through the information. Well, and I don't think everybody's going to get 100% right. Go ahead. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I understand that. That's not what I'm trying to... I, just mostly looking into the fact that, I mean, who he kind of gets his inspiration from, and that's what's kind of concerning, you know, because like, with a, like a lot of stuff, like with Mark Dice, looking, what, what he looks into and stuff, you know, with the Illuminati. Um, mm -hmm. Jordan well, Maxwell, who do you think that Jordan Maxwell, you know, who's behind Jordan Maxwell and his information? Well, he, he talks uh, in several interviews about um, Madame Blavatsky's uh, yeah. uh, influence into him. You know, that his, that her second book is his favorite. He's read several times. Yeah, the Theosophic Society. I mean, he's a promoter uh, of the Zeitgeist movement, too, and I'm not a promoter of that, but I think the first right. Zeitgeist movie is really good. You know, I, well, I think people have their blind spots, man. Go ahead. Well, oh, sorry. Well, I'm just, I'm just trying to say, like, I mean, Madame Blavatsky, you know... If She's you, a Satanist. You know, the Theosophical <laughs> Society, and, yeah, so, you know, she was uh, Luciferian and all this. And mm -hmm. in her book, the second book that he talks about that is her favorite is the, you know, we all know Jordan Maxwell, that's not his real name. And 
in her book, it's 